Good morning, good day. I hope you're having an awesome conference so far, and I'm excited that you're here with me at ViewConf US so that we can talk about testing. I want to show you how to test a Vite based View 3 application using the Cypress Component Test Runner. Putting a test runner together with Vite is such a great idea because you get to leverage the speed and quickness of Vite. What happens is you end up with something that's a mix between a prototyping playground and a test runner. It's so satisfying to use and I think you'll love it. So let's jump in. We're gonna test drive some components. Um, we're gonna play around, do some features, and, uh, and build. The biggest problem with component testing today is that you can't see what you're doing. You can't see your components in your tests. And so when they pass or fail, do you have confidence that you actually know what they look like and what your users will see? I don't, because my users use a browser, and I use a browser. I don't really use a terminal all that much, at least not for components. So why are we testing in the dark? Why are we testing in a place that we can't see, in this dark, dark terminal, and we have no idea what the end result will be when we ship and deploy our code? So if we take a look at a just test failure, this test tells us that we had a form element that was supposed to be visible and it's not. And so our job when we get a failing test um, like this one is to start to debug it. And many people have fancy debuggers, but I know a lot of us still use console log. So I'm going to show you how I console log debug stuff like this. So the first thing you do is you check, well, what's the form and why isn't it visible? And so you print out this form result that you get, and you see that it is a DOM wrapper with a wrapper element of HTML form element. And so that tells you a whole lot of nothing about why it's not showing. It just tells you that, okay, there's something there, and I think that it's an HTML element. And you're like, great, that's not helpful. So you dig in further, you're like, all right, let me get the wrapper element, let's see what that is doing and it's an HTML form element. Again, there's no discernible HTML there, so you have to keep climbing in. And finally, we get this inner HTML off of this form element, and I don't know about you, but I could leave this slide up for a while, and I would still need to read it over and over and over again to figure out if my form is actually visible, or is it in there at all? And so I just command F for form, and that's how I debug my just component tests. And I, I'm pretty sure a lot of you do the same. So after I fix this issue, which by the way is not apparent in this markup, um, you can't actually tell based on this markup why the form wasn't visible. But after I fix it, um, because I, I debugged it in, in Cypress, um, after I fix this test, I can see that the diff of the inner HTML is actually not any different between the pass and the fail. And that means that we can't actually use inner HTML in this case to debug what's going on. And I know that there's probably some computed CSS property that I should be looking at to tell me if this is visible or not. But you know, as well as I do, that there are a million and one reasons why an element couldn't be visible. And to check all of them, and to use the weird JS DOM API that you need to use to check all of those different properties, that's just not tenable. And it's particularly frustrating because if you just open up the browser, you'd know. And so what I find myself doing when I'm testing in a terminal is I just don't debug my failures in the terminal. I just open my browser because that has all the tools I need. It has my element explorer, it has my console, it has my source code, and it's source mapped, and I have a debugger right there. 
I don't need to figure out how to launch a node process and attach a, a debugger to it. I just have the entire Chrome development environment that I work in every single day. Of course I would use that. So testing in the browser gives you visibility into your issues, and it also gives you confidence that you know how to debug a failure, and that when you see a failure, you know what you're looking at. So I want to show you how to test a modal using Cypress component testing. I think it'll solve a lot of these problems. I think you'll love it. So let's go, let's do it. And uh... so we're going to start by testing a modal component that I found while looking for uh, inspiration for this talk. I found something on Grubhub, which is a simple modal. Um, you see them all over the internet. It has a um, overlay behind it to prevent the parent page from looking so bright. Um, it also has a form inside of it for you to enter your email and your zip code and a submit button um, to send your data up to their back end. It has a dismiss button and an X button hiding in the top right corner over here. When you hit the submit button, the dismiss button, or the X button, the whole form should go away as well as the overlay. So, so far, what we have is it is not visible when visible is set to false. So if we have a prop called visible, we'll do that. And then it is visible when visible is set to true. How about it emits a submit event with the form data, and then it can be closed with the X button. So let's start with these four tests. Um, so the first thing I do, so I write out all these expectations and then I open up the test runner. And so this is the Cypress test runner. It's, uh, it's got some hotkeys enabled and it has a file explorer on the left side. Um, you can at any point click on a spec on the left side or search for one and we're going to jump into our component here. Right now all of our tests pass because they have no assertions in them. We're going to focus on one test at a time and I'll show you how I like to develop. So the first thing is that our, per our perks modal isn't showing up and that's because we haven't passed visible. So we'll pass in the visible prop. Um, all of the commands that I'm using by the way, are from the te View Test Utils API, the Cypress test runner and the um, the mount command that comes from at Cypress View, are thin wrappers around View Test Utils. So once we hit save, our component is rendered with the um, with its information inside of it, and we see we have a nice emoji X button as well as your form and a button and a dismiss text. So it seems relatively correct, um, but let's test it. So first thing we're going to do is make sure that it's not visible when set to false. So when we set this to false, actually let's do it inside of here. When we set this to false um, and we get the form, it should not be visible. Awesome. And so that passed. It is not visible. And if we toggle this, it starts to fail because the form is not visible. Um, Cypress will tell you exactly why. It will tell you that it's because the parent with the class modal has CSS of display none. And if we look over at our source code here, we can see that we have vshow bound to visible. Um, and that must be evaluating to false. Um, right now because our modal isn't showing up. So if we set this to um, to not be visible, our tests will pass and we can put this use case uh, inside of the inside of the uh, check for what happens if the modal uh, shouldn't be shown. And conversely, we'll make another test for visible true, in which case the form should be visible. Now with these two uh, with these two test cases, let's see, 
Oh. With these two test cases, which we, we just ran, and we can tell that we ran them because we can expand the, um, the events and see the Cypress command log, which is what we call this section. Um, we can see that the command log correctly mounted stuff versus the empty assertions that say there were no commands issued in this test. So those, that's the test coverage we have so far, and that tells us that we haven't introduced certain kinds of bugs. Namely, if we were to hard code this to true, one of these assertions would fail, and then the other one would pass. Conversely, great. And so that asserts that we are properly listening to the visible property. After this, we can look at the rest of the behavior. Um, I'm going to put in the playground again. I'm, I call this a playground, really. Um, it's where I like to make sure my component is behaving as expected. And, uh, and any, any states that I want to reproduce or automate again, I just copy and paste it over into a new assertion. So at this point, we have our, our form here. Now we're going to submit an event with the form data. So to track emitted events, um, View Test Utils has an existing API. And so we can use that and grab the emitted events from it. Um, I'll also show you an alternate way to do this that is a little more semantic and nicer to use um, than views. It requires writing a wrapper component, which is a strategy I use a lot um, for everything from provide and inject components to like portals. I really use um, I really use wrapper components quite a bit, but we'll do the um, we'll do the view test utils method of checking for submitted events. So we have our component mounted, and we're going to find the two, um, the two input uh, events, input elements. All right. So we have data test ID, and we're going to grab the email from that and see that it found it. And Cypress will tell you exactly what it found, which is very, very convenient. Um, because if I had typoed this selector, it would tell me that it couldn't find data test ID mail and then I could very quickly open up my element explorer and see that the, um, the element it found was data test ID email and quickly paste that into here and fix my test. So it's very convenient having the, the visual debugger here to fix your selectors and such. Um, the equivalent in something like Jest is to just console log your index H your, your inner HTML to see what, you know, what text you're missing. Um, and that can be a little bit frustrating because it's hard to read everything on the terminal. Um, so now we have our data test idea of email and let's just type into it. Let's type in um, hello at world.com. Awesome. And you can see it just types it right in. Um, anytime I save the file, uh, Vite pushes a um, an update over the WebSocket and tells Cypress to reload. Um, we don't actually have native Vite HMR support yet, uh, but once that's in, and that's for, there are a few reasons for that, but right now we don't have that in. And once that happens, this should be as fast as your Vite dev server. In the meantime, um, we use hot reload, which gives us, you know, a few hundred milliseconds. It's not super fast, um, at least not by Vite's standards. So, but that's something we're really hoping to get to. Um, so we have it, uh, we have our email typed in and now we can grab the zip code and then type into that. And both of them are filled in. Um, and we can check what happens if we click on the submit button. So let's get the submit button and then click on it. And now we should be able to check, we can see that it was clicked on. Um, and now we should be able to check that the emitted events happened correctly. So what I just wrote was a, uh, a custom command that's not usually in Cypress. It's called view. 
Um, and that gives you access to the view wrapper. So if you've ever done um, in view test utils, if you ever do something like um, const wrapper is equal to mount, that's this wrapper. So it's actually the result that we get from mount. We just kind of uh, give you access to it later on. So it's also available on window, um, but if you're looking to get it within the, within the command chain, you can do it like that. So I always forget what the events I emit are. So I like to put, um, I like to put a debugger right here and Cypress will just jump me right there. Um, and I can start debugging, um, what's on the wrapper and I'm going to look for a submit event. Even though I think the event I gave was uh, was called save, because this submit event is actually the native DOM submit event, um, and you can you can tell because it's it's got the whole event uh, event information along with like all of the all of the um, elements it's touched, so it's it's pretty cool um, getting to debug these events and honestly the view. Um, emitted events just straight inside your terminal or j straight inside of your browser debug tools. It's, it's pretty awesome. So I think that I called it save and I did. And so if we grab into the, the first argument of save, we pass in an object which has the email and zip code and that looks correct. So let's just assert that that happened. Um, so we said wrapper emitted for save, and then the first argument of the first, um, boo, 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 boo. the first argument of the first um, emitted event. So we can grab the email and zip code off of this off of this argument, and then we're gonna um, create a quick reusable data object here, um, so we can so we don't have to hard code anything. So hello at world.com and then the zip code of uh, when I lived in New York. Data zip code and then data email. And now I think let's mute the breakpoints, play through. Um, and now we should be able to assert that the email and zip code are correct. So expect email to equal data email and then expect zip code to equal data zip code. And both of these assertions work and that's awesome. So now I can take this test and put it inside of my um, emits an event, um, emits a submit event test. And that's actually not true. It's supposed to emit a save event. Though we could also write a test very quickly to make sure it, it, it emits a native submit event. Um, so I suppose we could do expect wrapper emitted for submit um, to have length. So on to the next test. Um, so now we want to check that our, our form, our modal can be closed with the X button. So again, I like to go into the playground, copy a mount command. So now we have our modal again, and we have the X button in the top right corner. We want to make sure that when we click on this X button that we're actually going to be able to close it. So we'll find the X button. So I think it was called X button inside of the class. Um, it is, it is called X button. And we are emitting a close event, so I think this is gonna work. So we're gonna get the X button and click it. And the same strategy, we can use um, this wrapper text to make sure that we are calling close. So this is a valid strategy and it maps exactly what we just did um, for the save event. But an alternate, uh, an alternate spelling of this is by pretending to be the parent component. So the way view test utils works is under the hood, it calls create app and then sets up your app as if you would in a main.js file, like the first file you load in your application. 
And that's how the test utils framework works, is it gives you this um, the ability to define um, a root level component and pass props into it. Um, exactly equivalent to this is actually just writing a parent component. And so you wouldn't have to pass in this props information into it because the parent component would do that. Um, so I really enjoy um, I really enjoy this because it gives me a real world API usage. So I can now stub out my entire page and call it like my web page, um, as well as a button to show and hide my modal. So we'll hook that up into visible. Um, and then we'll also uh, render the modal, the perks modal here and say visible is equal to if it's visible or not. Um, the parent component of whoever uses this modal is going to have to define the visible state. Um, we're going to default it to false for now. So at this point we're we have our modal and it's listening to the visible uh, property and then we also have a button to toggle the modal. Um, the last thing is now we'll mount the wrapper. It won't be able to find the X button because there's nothing open yet, but we can manually test by toggling it and clicking X. Boom, boom. And it's really satisfying actually. Now that we've finished testing the modal, I'd like to talk about a different way I like to display my components so that I can quickly understand what it is they're supposed to do. This is particularly effective when it comes to presentational components that have a lot of different properties that relate to how they're displayed. And these things can't really be tested easily and may not even have differences in the DOM markup. So being able to reveal these very quickly visually is very helpful. So this is what it looks like. This is the playground that has all of the different permutations for the base button. And we'll hop over to the code in a second and I'll show you that this is implemented live in Cypress and that there's a little bit more on how you can make this truly reactive and truly a playground to use. So let's debug the base button. Um, we have the button code here. It seems pretty simple. It takes a slot inside of it and then it has some classes that are conditionally applied based on the props. So like outline, branded, what color it is, if it's rounded, um, and some, some preset sizes. And then the rest of the, uh, rest of the file is just some style sheets with the proper colors like blue, green, yellow, and red. Um, so I feel like I understand this component. This component, you know, I can read it. It's pretty clean. It seems like I can understand it. Unless I use the component, I don't know if I like how it works or if I agree with how it works. Um, so the the thing I usually do um, generally when I'm working with a component I don't know is I open it up in a sandboxed environment um, or just somewhere in my application and I just start using it to see how it works. And that's essentially what I do in Cypress is I make a playground um, and see if it looks right. So in Cypress, um, I have a base button.sci file. We can switch to it by um, we can switch to it by switching to switching through to the um, file explorer, and we can see the default state is it's nice and blue, white text. Um, and now I would want to play with the different properties, so I would maybe do um, we would have different props. And I might do, let's say, the success color to see what success state looks like. So let's say color is success. And we can see it's green. And then we can try a warning. 
and it takes quite a long time to get through all of these different permutations when all you want to do is get a quick um, a quick look at what the API is and what all the visual props do and so I make little playgrounds um, to display the different permutations and this is pretty simple actually it's just a bunch of for loops over some arrays of properties um, you can see just the default behavior as well as what happens when it's small medium or large uh, you can also see outline states as well as rounded states and then at the bottom I always have a basic component where the parent can drive the properties um, and you can do it like this awesome sweet so it lets me really quickly pick the set of properties I want to use inside of my component so now knowing what the behavior is I think I want to use primary with maybe a large um, and I kind of like the way that outline looks I wonder but this is supposed to be a primary call to action on my form so maybe I'll just keep it large and primary um, so we'll go back into the perks modal go to the base button say it's color is primary and then uh, size is large super we've been talking almost exclusively about the Cypress component test runner during the entire 30 minutes so where is Vite in all of this? Well, Vite's there. It's just so imperceptible and so quick that you wouldn't notice it was even there unless you opened up your network dev tools. You might also notice it's there because your source maps are perfect. So if you're opening Chrome in the Sources tab, all of your source maps are perfectly mapped for TypeScript and for Vue, all of the tools you love. Veet just handles the tooling for you. So Veet is just barely there and Cyprus takes advantage of that. The reason Cyprus is so seamless is because of Veet and Veet's speed. We have a Webpack implementation and that's what most people are going to use at first. And it's not terrible. It's as bad as your current developer setup. So it is equivalent to what you're running with Vue CLI or what you're running with a vanilla Webpack setup because it just uses your dev server. So Vite, Vite uses the Vite dev server and Webpack uses the Cypress Webpack dev server. And both of these make sense. As developers, we each use our own dev servers and environments per project. So having a dedicated adapter so that your test framework, your test runner, can use the same bundle config is just makes sense. So what did we learn? What did we learn over the last 30 minutes? We learned how to build test and debug within Cypress in the Cypress component test runner. We learned how to mount components and then assert on emitted events after we interact with the components. And then we also learned how to assert on the app's visual state and to make sure that it looks correct or is interactable. Lastly, we looked at playgrounds. We looked at these new ways of representing your components in tiny, tiny chunks that can then be pulled out and tested individually. So these are some really cool patterns. I'm excited that I got to share them with you. So for the future, we want you to contribute and support us as we focus on stabilization, support, and plugins. So to contribute, you can submit an issue to the Cypress repository. You can join our Discord or tweet at us to ask us questions or to provide community support. And lastly, you can give us feature requests on the features you want to see. When it comes to the plugins we'll be working on, we're looking to create an environment, or a, an IDE almost, that's tailored for your components. 
So we're hoping to get things like Figma iframes embedded side by side to your development environment so you can see as you develop your component how it looks like compared to the Figma mocks. We're also looking for things like dark mode and viewport breakpoints that allow you to switch between mobile and desktop and tablet. And all of these together, I think, will, will create a better and better experience. And once we have some basic plugins fleshed out, we're going to make this whole thing pluggable and let the community really make it their own. So thank you for listening, and I hope you learned something during this talk. I hope you're excited about Cypress and about Veet and about Vue 3 and how all three of them can work wonderfully together to give you an awesome app stack that you'll want to work in every day.